Serious, doctors, have you ever wanted to refuse a patient? What did he she do? Yep. Currently discharging a patient for forging disability paperwork and faking my signature on the form. DHS. Depth of human services. Hilariously contacted my office requesting that I sign it myself rather than having the patient do it for me. As if she had my consent to commit fraud. <laughs> yeah, drug seekers who get really mean and nasty and in my face. Yelling at me, insulting my intelligence and education, gawked out on who know what legal pills and illegal substances. Those people ruin my day. I add fuel to the fire by refusing to give them any more narcotics. I am a nurse at an allergy and immunology clinic. Since we are not an er, we have the right to refuse patients. Most people are asked to leave simply because they are being buttholes to the staff. People can get really angry and abusive about their bills. In my time. I have seen maybe 5 patients terminated for their inappropriate behavior. More often, the most interesting folks we turn away are not even patients. For a long time, we had a nice homeless man who would come in at least once a week in a tattered fake UPS uniform and ask if we had any packages. We would always tell him we did not, and he would quietly take a fistful of lollipops from the front desk and leave. We eventually had to tip off the building manager as patients were complaining, but I think about him every so often. I truly hope that somewhere, someone is providing him with candy. Comma I have seen maybe 5 patients terminated for their inappropriate behavior. Play nice, kids, or it's doctor. G calls special injection brew. Drug seekers like the rest have said, but there was one that stood out in my memory. A lady who was tridged as green on a particularly busy night. Green is usually non-life threatening things that can wait a few hours before being seen. Grew impatient after a few hours of waiting. She stormed into our work area, the door connecting us to the waiting room, and started yelling at everyone why she was still waiting. One of the nurses approached her to calm her down, and I remember hearing her yell this on the way out, your public servants. Remember the servant part. My shift ended before I had to see her. She should have remembered the patient part. I once fired a patient for being an incredible pain in the butt. Details escape me. Years later after I had moved to a new location, she showed up to make an appointment not knowing I was there. New staff read her chart do not ever appoint this person and froze up with her in waiting room. They came to ask me what to do, but by the time I had gotten out there she was already being crazy and said very loudly, I would never come to this place. You are all very rude and left of her own accord. She basically fired herself the second time. I worked in a GP surgery for a while and I know one of them has transferred at least 3 patients. 2 guys, 1 girl, for declaring their love for her. Also a couple of ridiculously violent people, usually pain pill seekers, get kicked out. Bear in mind this is in a dodgy area of Belfast and half the patients are former current paramilitary members so violent means violent. Oh that reminds me, a different doctor in the same surgery had his coat stolen by a patient and one of the other patients, who was a paramilitary member, who really liked him made sure he got it back with everything in it, minus money that had already been spent, and told him the thief patient would never bother him again. So I guess he had a patient refused on his behalf? I really wonder how often MDs get hit on, like seriously hit on, not just flirted with. I mean, my gum surgeon is cute as heck, and my mom is also super into him. When my husband was in med school they had fake clinical days where they hired patients to fill a role, dying terminal DX, and one who disrobed and went for it so they could practice how to handle those situations. I was a nurse at a walk-in clinic when we had a patient come in for a spider bite. She had a small swollen spot on her butt and was probably bitten by some common house spider. Definitely not venomous. She wanted a doctor to make it disappear so that she could work that night. She was a stripper and knew that she would make less money with a red swollen bump on her bum. The doctor couldn't do anything and the patient got angry and started getting loud. She yelled loud enough for the whole clinic to hear. Well, just suck it. She wanted the doctor to suck the venom from her butt. We immediately asked her to leave. After a few minutes of arguing we had to call the police. TL. DR. Stripper wanted a spider bite on her butt sucked. Homegirl needs to put a temporary glitter tattoo over that. 
GI doc here. Unfortunately the patient had borderline personality disorder and would swallow razor blades every time she got into an argument with her boyfriend. She has had more than 30 upper endoscopies. Yes. People who yell at my staff for no reason at all. People who are clearly drug seekers. We had one guy at the VA who had been seen the previous 3 nights in a row for pain. I pulled his chart. I also pulled his chart from 4 previous VAs he has been to. All the same. I denied him. He then sent his wife in for back pain. I took one look and told her to leave. He then moved on to the next VA down the interstate. Some patients will obviously be difficult to care for, and there are plenty of other doctors in my area. A patient might call and insist on talking with me before making their initial appointment, then not let me off the phone with multiple questions. I'm generally busy, trying to get to the next patient. Worse, they will start to disagree with my over the phone answers. This has happened more than once, and I've said to them I'm sorry, but I can tell you would be better off with another physician. At that point, they always back down and talk about how they've heard how wonderful I am, etc. But I'll let them know they need to call somebody else. The first time this happened I'd been in practice only a short time and had lots of openings in my schedule so I was very hesitant to do it, but I was very glad that I did, and realized I had control over my life and my practice. Resident physician, never fired a patient, but a colleague with her own pediatric practice fires patients who are not immunized. If they won't follow her medical advice, go somewhere else. Good for her. I really dislike it when parents don't listen to the qualified medical advice of a medical doctor, especially in the case of vaccines. I am a psychologist but not a physician. I refuse to treat people all the time. However by treatment I really mean assessment as this is what I do, along with some counseling in select cases. I refuse to treat adolescent patients that do not agree to therapy. It's a waste of everyone's time. I also refuse to treat or assess if there is even a hint of an upcoming child custody hearing. Heck no. Ugh. I'm a teacher you're smart to avoid child custody cases. Those get nasty, and no one ever wins especially not the child. I had a patient come and so drunk she couldn't walk wanting her crowns delivered. We didn't have them. She was rude so all we did was resment her temporary crowns. I had another who's an alcoholic and somehow lost her new denture that I delivered for another doctor. She called me a year later upset that she didn't know what she did with them between the time she left the office and got home. I really wanted to ask her if she called the bar she stopped at to see about the lost and found. I just told her we could make a new one for her if she paid. I had a doc discharge refuse me once. I was 16 and he was my neurologist for my epilepsy. I had only seen him a couple of times. My parents, divorced, were fighting over who would pay for my doctor visits and so I wasn't able to see him as often as I was supposed to. He told me I was irresponsible and I should try harder. Dong. This is also the other side of the coin, but as a teen, in the 90s, I was particularly entrenched in the whole grunge punk look. I had terrible problems with ovarian cysts and had ongoing medical treatment for it. At one point I was sent for an ultrasound, and the tech performing it started berating me, saying your pain is obviously from all of the scar tissue here from your abortion, and kept making comments of the like. I was 16, in pain, and was horrified by what this man was saying to me. I had never had an abortion. I realized later that he had made assumptions because of how I was dressed, and realized just how crappy people can be sometimes. Yeah, not all doctors are equal. Not by a long shot. I am on the other side of this one. When I was in my 20s back in the 80s I was working for a really crappy factory. I was unloading a truck and pulled a groin muscle and at first it did not seem too bad and I just ignored it. One day it really flared up and I was kind of scared and hurting so I went to a local clinic and at admitting I was asked if it was work related and said yes and the admitting lady stared at me as if I had two heads. I went in to see the doctor and told him what was wrong and the butthole said you can't sue your company, you can go back to work tomorrow and that was it. No explanation of what was wrong or any attempt at help all delivered with a dismissive and contemptuous voice. At the time I was young and dumb and pretty used to being treated like crap at home and at work so I just left and accepted that as my fate. I have matured a lot since then and don't take that crap anymore. 
Despite being thought of as having to do whatever the doc says, pharmacists have quite a bit of leeway in dispensing. I've had people refuse to leave, even when closing. People scream and swear and use racist comments. People crap on the floor of the bathroom, and just plain try to snatch it out of my hand. One went outside, got in his car, came through the drive through and asked if this was bulletproof glass. I had no idea but promptly answered yes. As a resident, and I feel that I speak on behalf of many of us out there, we cannot thank you enough for what you do. So many times a pharmacist has called me to double check an order and I am always thankful for the call. All too often it has resulted in improved dosing or takes into account something we hadn't thought of initially. So for your information thanks and we love you guys. Nurse here, known drug addict patient complaining of headache pain. I offered her Tylenol first and explained that if that didn't work we would offer her something stronger. She started screaming at the top of her lungs that she needed Ivdilordin. Actually Dilordin but that is what she said. That pills did not work for her and the only thing that helped was Ivdilordin. Then she fired me. I was certainly relieved. People with no real medical emergency who call 9. 1. 1. When they have multiple family members who could easily transport them. A lot of people assume that getting brought in in an ambulance means you'll get bumped to the top of the waiting list in the air so they don't have to wait for ages. Of course they've no clue about Tridge nor the thinking skills to realize that the stabbing victims and heart attacks are always going to get treated over a broken bone. Uh Often. In the ED or hospital you can't refuse them. Sometimes I give the appropriate care which is not equal to what they want. That is. Narcotics. Benzos. Tons of tests. In the clinic. We fire a lot of people. Two men in O-shows. Fired. Cuss out the front desk and threaten them. Fired. I had a patient come to see me today after being with another doc I know well. He wants more Oxycontin. The other doc only gives him 30 a month. He is suffering on that. I told him I would take care of him, but I wouldn't be writing for his chronic narcs. He won't be back. I won't take patients who refuse to vaccinate their children, unless they have a medical reason such as an allergy or severe reaction. Sort of related. My office phone number is very similar to a pain management clinic's. I had the lovely opportunity to answer the phone of a very pee off patient who was being refused service and could not understand that she called the wrong number. I could only imagine what the poor workers their experience with this woman. In the 5 conversations I'd had with her I was called a lying CB she will find where I live her and have her ex can boyfriend beat the ever loving crap out of me and other various versions of threats of bodily harm and insults. This went on for a week straight before she realized that I wasn't playing a trick on her. That she actually called the wrong number. I was a manager at a GP surgery. I've kicked quite a few patients off our list. The majority for abusive, threatening or racist behavior towards my staff or attempting to defraud the practice. I did however refuse to have a patient attend the practice, insisting that he was only ever seen in his own home. He was a convicted pedophile who'd also been done for sexual assault on a girl the same age as two of my receptionists. He defecated and urinated in the clothes he stood up in, had probably not bathed since 1973, was permanently drunk and on the one time he drove to the surgery, hit every wall, barrier and car in the car park. Luckily he was recalled to prison not long after he was assigned to us and was not alive for long after that having refused treatment for sepsis. Wretched creature. Vet here, so clients rather than patients. I wouldn't say that I fire clients often, but it has certainly happened before and will probably happen again usually it's with people who refuse to comply because they read something online. People who routinely waste your time talking about internet diagnosis, both huge time drains, just not worth the trouble, and people who refuse to have their pets properly vaccinated, posing a danger to the rest of the patients. And of course people with a history of not paying for treatment. We get drug seekers on occasion, but those are presumably rarer than in human medicine. I just have a funny vision of a dog pointing his paw toward the medicine cabinet. You show him a bottle of Tylenol and he bats it away and heads for the oxy. All the time. I'm on my break on shift right now and we've already thrown out two tonight. Abusive idiots who don't understand they can't just f and blind and get what they want. Every day we throw patients out here because, 
at least when I'm in charge, you don't get to walk into my emergency department and shout and be abusive and horrible, when there are poorly patients and kids who don't want to hear that. I don't care if you don't want to wait or if you fricked up your stupid foot being drunk. It could be busted to huck and back for all I care. If you're shouting and swearing in my face you can go away. But more doctors need this attitude, I feel. Unless, you know they had their liver lacerated by a punch. There was a guy in my hometown who was homeless and had a heart attack. Ira gave him orange juice and had security throw him out when he wouldn't leave. Died on their lawn of guess what? Heart failure. I once went to a doctor with my 4x broken arm which was a parrot at 3 months before. The titan nails should be removed soon. Me and my mother waited a normal amount of time but somehow my mom freaked the frick out made a massive scene causing the doctor to kick me and her out refusing any future contact. Well done mom. Okay, I can't hold back any longer. I was in a hospital bed, in the process of losing my baby. I had major complications from enlarged fibroids, when the queen sea of nurses accused me about lying about the severity of my pain. Her exact words were nice try honey. I hope that her crap life is freaking filled with misery and desperation. Yeah, can't you tell I'm just here for the drugs. Whoa, I hope you reported that C. My dad is a general surgeon. He can and does regularly refuse to see patients. Of course, he doesn't do this if they need immediate, life-saving surgery or anything, but he absolutely will for less time-sensitive problems if he doesn't think he is a good fit for them. I guess aside from the overtly abusive, violent, straight-up butthole patients, as a neurologist the most frustrating ones I see on a regular basis are non-compliant seizure patients who also abuse alcohol and street drugs. They come in after being off their meds and going on sea and drinking binges. And of course they have seizures. And it's like, okay, I can pump them full of meds now, but ultimately what do you want me to do for this person? They leave the hospital, stop their meds, start drinking again, and the cycle repeats, ad nauseam. Abuse my staff, you're out. A patient that didn't get what they want. Young lady, you work for me my letter to the patient. Paraphrased, no she works for me and your behavior has compromised the doctor patient relationship blah blah. I took my daughter to the pediatricians a while back. We were in the examining room waiting on the doctor's arrival. I received a call from my boss at work and answered because she hadn't arrived. The doctor opened the door, saw me on my phone, and really told me she'd return when I decided the appointment was more important than my phone call. If it hadn't been an on-base doctor, a major I think, I would have responded in kind. Instead I bit my lip. I know I wasn't the doctor, but this one refused me for the time I was on my phone. But dang work calls. My friend's crazy wife was refused treatment by several medical DRS. She has borderline personality disorder and maybe because of this or not she is very rude and bitchy. When they examined and questioned her, she didn't like or agree with what they had to say so she would storm out of their offices yelling and swearing. He had to take her to several DRs until they found one who told her what she wanted to hear. It's pretty normal to decline a ride in the ambulance when it's obvious it's not necessary. It's the doctor's decision. In my country, Czech Republic, People started to call an ambulance whenever something small occurred instead of going to the air. Why? Because they would have to pay a fee of 90 crowns there. Yes, America, you pay literally thousand of dollars in care and here people won't even pay 3 US dollars and 50 cents. The Czechs didn't even want to pay 30 CZK, 1 dollar, for a GP. So the parliament abolished it. Funny, huh? I wish. I'm a nurse in a hospital, so we can't refuse patients. We had one patient who was only there a couple of days. Thank God. He threatened to sue us every day. Every single person who came in the room he berated and called them incompetent. On day shift alone he went through two different nurses who eventually refused to continue to take care of him after a few hours because he was so awful. My manager ended up being his nurse and basically never left the room. She cleaned the room with the housekeeper and was in the room when he ordered his food and when the doctors visited him. He still called the dietary people idiots for bringing him the wrong food, it was exactly what he ordered. 
threatened to sue the doctors for negligence etc. At one point he was complaining that the hospital wasn't doing enough and the nurses weren't doing enough for him. My manager said she had been in the room all day and she said that they had been doing absolutely everything they could be doing. He said that it wasn't enough and they should be working harder to please him. He also constantly talked about how other hospitals in the area were way better and our hospital was a crap hole that only hired stupid buttholes. He was mean and derogatory and I wish we could have just shipped him off to another one of the better hospitals. Psychologist. Not being able to afford the $5 copay on the meds you need that keep you from spending $200 or more when the lack of meds puts you in a hospital. But you can buy premium gas for your car. Expensive food for your cats. Constantly hold arts and crafts stuff at hundreds of dollars a month. Come back and see me when you display the prioritizing necessary to get your life in order. Otherwise, complete waste of time. Oof. I wish my meds had a $5 copay. I pay $300 more on my meds and currently have no income but not getting them is not an option. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Buy for now.